right, sorry about that. That was interesting. So this is what that finished assembly looks like. So you see you the two parts of the mold that you created just in general and that walk through how to create that. And then we also have these two side cores for the two buttons and those pop out of the side right there. And what we're gonna cover is create first just the main mold for the core and the cavity. And then we're gonna cover how we create these two side cores. All right, so the first thing we wanna do, we wanna look at our part. If you guys have done this before, normally as we go through and do draft analysis and do all that, the entirety of how can we draft and how can we do draft analysis would really best be covered in a whole other fit from support segment. And if you guys are interested in doing that, um, throw me a comment and let me know and I can definitely look into doing a straight from support on the different tools we have available for drafts, such as draft, draft expert, draft analysis, things like that and how we use this. But just for the point of this, I've created all the drafts that needed to happen on the part. So all of the little edges inside here have the draft. I'm also gonna turn off real view graphics. I turned it on so that the uh, image would look better when we went and did that little video showing what was going on. But I'm gonna turn it off when I'm working. And one of the reasons I'm gonna do this is just so it's working a little bit quicker it um, was kind of slowing down my computer a bit, even with a pretty simple part, just because it had to evaluate every time I move my part, what the reflection in the room looked like. So I'm gonna turn off that real view graphics. Notice that what happened when I did that, my shadows went away and this reflection, you can kind of see like a room in the background here. That all goes away and it just makes it a lot simpler for my graphics card going through here. All right. So the next thing we want to do when we're working with mold tools, we always want to take into account um, whether the part is going to shrink. And we do that using the scale tool. And in this case, the material is going to have a shrink factor of 0.05, which means since we're working a part in creating a mold, not working with the mold and creating a part, we're going to scale it up to 1.05. And we're going to do that about the centroid going to make our part just slightly bigger and that way we can affect count for that shrinkage. The next thing we want to do when we're using mold tools is we want to create a parting line. So we want to tell uh, SolidWorks where that parting line is going to be. So we're going to hit parting lines. We're going to select a face. In this situation, I'm going to pick the front plane because I notice when I hover over my planes, that front plane looks like a good spot for the parting uh, for the direction of the pull for the core and cavity. I'm going to have it set to three degrees. Um, like I said, we're not going to go very far into the draft because I already did all the drafts necessary. We're just going to hit that and do a draft analysis. You can see this looks good. And we've got our parting lines here. It created a parting line all along the back edge, and we're going to hit green check. Some of that stayed colored, so that's fun. And I just toggle on and off draft analysis, do a control Q. And remove those appearances, not sure how those got to sticking around. All right, so we have our parting line. You guys can see this dark blue line that's appearing here and our parting line in the sketch or as something that looks like a sketch. The next thing we want to do is we want to create shut off surfaces. So we want to create surfaces where the mold, um, if there's a hole in the part or anything, where the mold should end. So what we can do is we can use our mold tools up here and we do, we've got our parting lines created. We want to go to shut off surfaces, and what I actually want to do, I forgot I had already created, so I'm just going to delete those there. So I'm going to create my shut off surfaces. So notice I don't have any surface bodies, I just have the one solid body. I go to shut off surfaces, and it picks the 
any hole that it found. And it does a pretty good job, but there's some redundancy. And it even says here there's some redundancy. You can go through and delete out the ones you don't want. Um, I normally just clear out the whole selection there. And I find it pretty easy to select my line and pick. And every once in a while, so in this one, the line went the right way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my Y key. So yes, yes. And that made a correct loop. I'm going to go here again. I could also hit the tangency and it grabs it all. But every once in a while, you'll notice that it, when I go to create surfaces and something important here, I'm going to want to pick this inside surface so that I do with the little lines here, uh, the, the actual outline, when I go to create my side core piece. But when I pick here, Sometimes it doesn't always go in the right direction. So notice it's going in the wrong direction. If that happens, I can hit my N key. So Y for yes, N for no. And then just continue to hit Y and make my second loop and final, or my third loop and finally my fourth loop. And so it has all those edges. It has all those and it says the mold is separable in between cavity and core. So I can check. And what has been created right now are some solid bodies. So I have four and cavity bodies, five of each. So if I isolate out this guy, this is what the face that my core looks like here. And then if I were to look at all these other pieces, they're just the shut off surfaces that I just created. And there's the same the cavity here. So if I isolate out this guy, it's created my cavity surface and it, notice my cavity has the little lip down there. All right, so I have my core and cavity. My colors are quite colorful right now, just kind of looking at my SOLIDWORKS parts. Uh, so now I'm ready. I've created my core, my cavity, and I've created my shut off surfaces. I'm ready to create my parting surface. And what a parting surface is, this is the thing that's going to uh, split the cavity and core in between its two halves. So I'm going to go and I'm going to select parting surface. And notice it picks the edges of where that parting line is and it just makes this, this going straight out. And I'm going to pick, I could either just keep increasing this or I could just pick and select 50. It doesn't matter that it's not like perfectly round. What we want to make sure is if I'm going to draw a box that's going to represent my core and cavity, like the outline edges of that, I want to make sure this parting surface is bigger than that box. So I just want to make sure the parting surface is big enough that I could draw a square that would represent or a rectangle that would represent my mold. So this is big enough to me. I know 50 is because I know what dimensions I end up wanting to make it. A uh, parting surface, perpendicular to pull, normally works pretty well. Normal to surface or tangent to surface. Uh, so you'll notice tangent looks pretty much the same. Sometimes normal, see how it got a few little waves in here now, so I don't want to use that. But this perpendicular to pull, so perpendicular to that shin of the plane uh, that I picked. So I picked my front plane, so it's going to be perpendicular to that front plane. This is going to be a nice flat parting surface. I'm going to hit knit all surfaces. So I'm going to knit the uh, parting surface to my surfaces that I just showed you that I already had created and hit green check. All right, and now I have my parting surface and I'm ready to draw the sketch that's going to create my mold. And so I've been doing everything on my front plane. So I'm going to I could either select the front plane or I could even, since that's perpendicular to the pole, even just select my party. And I'm going to create a sketch on this plane. I'm going to do a control eight so I'm looking right at it and I'm actually going to turn it around so I'm looking right at it this way. And I'm going to create a 150 by 100 rectangle. I'm going to start it on the origin because it's right in the middle of my camera. And I'm going to make it 150. This way, 
and 100 millimeters this way. And so this is going to represent that outline box of my party of my mold. So I can exit my sketch and I'm going to create my mold. So now that I have my parting surface, I have this that I want to create, I can do what's called a tooling split. So if I click on the sketch, I can hit the tooling split. And what it does, it knows, okay, so the top and bottom of that, notice my parting surface is fully bigger than my tooling split. I haven't addressed these two side cores yet, but I'm, we're going to get there in just a second. I need my tooling split first in order to create that. And I'm going to make them, let's do 10 and 40, just because they're even numbers. But it, it just depends on what you want your mold to look like. I can hit green check. And right now I have my core and cavity. And if I go into my solid bodies, I can see I have, well, first the camera, and then I have first part and, and tooling split too. Nope, I hit it instead of isolating it. I have this part. And this is actually the piece I need to take these two side cores out of because this isn't really replicable in real life. Yeah, I can have the pieces like this fine and solid works allows them to be created, but really I need side cores to cut out these squares out of my pieces here. So I'm going to exit isolate and I'm actually going to go in and hide my surfaces just so they're not kind of getting in my way. And I need to create that side core. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make this transparent. That way I can kind of see through it a little bit easier. And I'm going to hide this piece. And now I can see how my camera body fits into the part and I can start creating my side core. So the first thing I want to do is I want to draw Sketch. And I'm going to start out by drawing a sketch for this square piece. And what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to draw a sketch on this inside face here. So I'm going to draw a sketch. And then I'm going to do Control-8. I'm going to hit it twice to go normal. It flips it upside down. Um, you could rotate it 180 degrees around. I'm just going to kind of work with it like this because it's not a huge deal, but it's upside down. And I'm going to create my sketch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create kind of like a parallelogram. And I want this parallelogram to be centered within that sketch of the square. So I'm going to have to first make sure these guys are equal. I'm going to give this, it's going to be a 10 degree line, so 90 minus 10 is 80. I'm going to pick a center line and go from the middle of this line middle of this line and force it to be vertical. So that means these two should have some symmetry going on here. And I'm going to rotate around a little bit. What I want to do is I want to grab the center point of this line and hook it onto this line. And now I'm going to start throwing in some other dimensions. So I want the, zoom in, get a little better angle here. So I want the bottom to be 16 millimeters. 
I want from the top to the bottom to be 14 and a half millimeters. And I want from the bottom of this to the bottom of this piece to be five millimeters. A little bit off. Let's try that again. Bottom up here to this. What are you doing? Let's try this a different way. There we go. And then I'm just going to round out the edges so I don't have these super sharp edges here. I'm going to use my sketch fillet tool. And I'm going to round them to 1.5 millimeters. Okay, green check. And there we go. So I have the shape that I want to use to create my side core. So I'm going to exit out of this sketch. And then I'm going to want to go back into Mold Tools and hit this core button because I'm going to want to create a side core. Because I was in that sketch, it already pre-selected some things. So I'm going to rotate around so you guys can see a little bit better. So it tried to pre-select the direction. It's actually going the wrong way. So I'm going to need to flip that. But it picked this parting line. Like this is the body it wants to take out of, which isn't true. I actually wanted to take out of that tooling split. So I'm going to do there. I'm going to flip the direction here. And so I want it to take a through all out of the tooling split. I want it to basically cut the entirety out of this part. Notice I have a little bit of a taper here. And then blind, I want it to go far enough for the depth. Um, so you could put, if you know the depth, you could put that in there. It's going to stop at whatever the depth is because that's how deep that was. So as long as you're a little bit bigger than the depth, you should be fine, which means I should be safe with five millimeters. And so I'm going to hit my green check. And what I have now, you see there's a little cutout here, and that's actually in my core bodies piece. So I'm going to take my tooling split and change the transparency back to normal. You can see where the cut came from that. Let's show this guy again. And I'm going to isolate that little piece. It does do some funky stuff when you um, had a part that was transparent and then you create a part off of that. You kind of have to toggle the transparency a few times which is why I just had to like go and do it, isolate and toggle the transparency. But you can see that side core right there. And then if I exit isolate, you can see I have the side core, the core, the cavity, and the main body. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to do it on the other little circle piece, but it would be the exact same procedure. So I make sure I select the interface of my part sketch around it that's going to take up enough space to where I could create that side core. And then I hit my core button and it automatically picks a part. Sometimes I have to tell it which piece to take the core out of. In this case, it was my uh, tooling split tool two. I give it some drafts so you notice know, it drafts up, make sure the directions are right, and you have your side core. So if anybody has any questions, be sure to um, throw it into the chat and I'll get to that. But we're about to go back over to Cami, but just to give you a, cover, um, a recap, we created our mold. We were able to go through step-by-step -step in the mold tools. 
we were able to create shutoff services and then our core cavity services. Uh, we used, we created a core and cavity body and then pulled the side cores out of those bodies. And you could do that on either the core or you could do that on any side you wanted or uh, whatever angle you needed to in order to get your part to work correctly. All right, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and throw them into the chat. I am going to pass it over to Cami, who is going to talk about WellMint. So take it away, Cami. And Cami, why don't you introduce yourself? Um, I gave you a little bit of an intro, uh, but go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Uh, Welcome, everybody. Uh, don't, believe a, don't, don't believe a thing that Heather said about me. They're probably all true. Um, I am one of the tech support managers with Fisher Tech. I've been with Fisher since uh, 2007, so going on 13 years, and uh, have had the pleasure of working with Heather for the last three and a half, I believe. Is it three? Like that. Uh, so, something uh, like that. Yeah. Yeah, something, something like that. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I want to thank her for inviting me to straight from support. Um, this is after four attempts of her trying to get me to be able to present where my time worked out, where I was actually available to do so. So I'm actually looking forward to this. I'm gonna keep it nice and simple here. I'm gonna go ahead and just share my screen real quick. And I think that's the one I want. We're gonna move some stuff around here. So I, I'm a big Weldman's fan. Um, I've taught the Weldman's class multiple times over the years and I always get, get a kick out of it. That sheet metal and surfacing are kind of my thing that I like to play with here. Um, but one of the things that always kind of got me was, um, a different way of using weldments. I mean, what do we normally see with weldments? We think they're structural members. So what I'm gonna to review today is looking at um, configured profiles of a, of a weldment and just looking at this from a, in this case, a, a woodworking standpoint, fencing, packaging, and that type of thing. So if we take a quick look here, let's see if I can switch my next. So, you know, again, not just for structural feel, I'm gonna use it for fencing and woodworking. Um, packaging, cabinet design. And you could probably say to yourself, well, why, why am I not just using an assembly? Which is what we normally do. Why would I bother doing this? Well, first of all, by building these types of things inside of a part file, I'm removing the struggles that in-context design has at an assembly level. So for anybody who's done an in-context design, which is a um, top-down assembly, you know, you can run into issues such as circular references. I've got, you know, too many parts talking to too many parts and SolidWorks stops understanding what to do. Or I run into a situation where, ooh, I even forgot to just save my assembly off as something. So now all my references are saved to SM1. So if anybody's ever gone through that, I have too. Um, you know, that definitely removes that because we're at a part level. Another advantage of that is the fact that because it is at a part level, any changes I make should reflect on everything there, not just on one component. And then for the assembly side, well, when do I use the assembly then? So I actually had the pleasure of working with a company called Romana that um, gave me the idea for this presentation is I did some consulting for them. And this question came up, well, what about, you know, the, the assembly? When do I do that? So if you think about this, especially in cabinetry and stuff like that, when I'm first cutting these pieces out, I'm not going to automatically necessarily put the holes in there. I'm just care about what's the length. So from the assembly level, we're looking at creating those secondary operations, getting holes or using the hole wizard or hole series to get holes going all the way through and then adding my hardware and brackets or whatever it might be that I need to finish at that secondary level. So I'm going to try to review all, all of this, uh, you know, not going to try to overwhelm you guys here. So let's see if I can get in here. So the first example I have, and a lot of these, I had some pre-built stuff just to give an idea of what I'm looking at. Um, but this is just basically the idea that I'm building some walls for, for a carton, for container packaging, right? So before I do that, what I'm gonna show you is the setup of the profile itself. So I have this underwhelmment profiles. Now, what's important here is what I've got is what I'm gonna call bar stock. Now, if you remember anybody who's ever worked with weldments before, you know, you got some digging down to do. You know, SolidWorks is pointing at weldment profiles folder, and then you've got ANSI inch, and then what's, you know, what type? Oh, I'm going to use aluminum tubing rectangular. Then what size? What I did was created a simple right underneath, kind of just what I'm calling bar stock, or I call customer, whatever I might want, but just one simple library feature here. 
when I open that up, what you're going to see is the fact that I have configurations in that feature. So I've got all my sizes that I need to build pretty much anything I might need in wood, for the scenarios that I at least built here, and be able to, you know, switch out and use these instead of having all these individual profiles. So it saves me from having all that huge list of sizes as separate files. So if I take a look at my first example here, and I edit this feature real quick. So there's my weldment, like I said, I already kind of started built. And you can see I built with panels as well as wood and, you know, was, gave it a, a nice little pine here so we could kind of see what's going on. If I go ahead and edit that weldment right there, let's try not editing the weldment, let's edit the feature here, that would be much better. If I come in here, and you can see that as for the type, instead of doing, you know, aluminum tubing or whatever it might be, I'm pointing to the configuration and it's actually telling me it's configured. And there you can see the list of sizes there that I'm using. So in this case, I was playing around a little bit and I'm just going to start a new group here and it works just like a weldment does. The only difference is, you know, working in wood here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a new group and I'm just going to go ahead and Start selecting some bars here. That's what's going to be separating and help structure the inside of my panels. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Because I defined this as pine throughout, it should recognize this and accept that as pine. And great, I've got a phone call coming. We're going to go ahead and kill that off. There we go. No idea who's calling me right now. All right. So the other part of this is, again, doing non weldment features in addition. So just like I can do weldments with steel and I can do, you know, structural steel and then I could do sheet metal with it, I can do the same thing here. I can turn around and start adding, say, you know, panels that I need by using the information I've already got. So I'm just going to go ahead and start a quick sketch here. I'm going to go ahead and get a rectangle going on and I'm going to use some information I've already got there from the points I was using. It helps to use the right rectangle, right? From the points I was using for defining where this location is, I might have to do a little bit of tweaking on this. It's not letting me pick up. That's all right. We're going to force it. So I'm just going to hold control, select my two points, force that to go in the corner. I'm going to do the same on over here. Again, just holding control. And then all I have to do is define one of the bottoms here. And now I can go ahead and build that outside panel. So I'm just going to do an extrude. Find it. Maybe I want, you know, one eighth inch thick plywood. So that's what I'm building at this point is just going to build some plywood, making sure that it's going away from. And one of the probably the most important things when you're building in context at a part level is the idea, because I want these all to be separate pieces. I want them to be separate bodies. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that merge result is not turned on. Now, by default, it shouldn't be. And you might say to yourself, oh, you know, how do I know the difference? When you're building a normal part, just I'm going to build a block and I'm going to start adding to it. I'm going to add a hole and I'm going to add an extrude here. And maybe I've got a circular boss over here. All of that gets merged together into one body. When I'm building like this at that part level, what I'm making sure is these results are not merged. So they create their own separate bodies. I'm going to go ahead and just accept that. And you can see, and I'm having a little trouble with my graphics here. I have to keep going. Uh. And the, there we go. There's my real view graphics on. Now it's behaving again. So there's my panel right there. And what it's doing is it's adding this information to my cut list. Now something to keep in mind with that cut list. I'm just going to go ahead and go into the properties of one of these. Is that because I'm using weldments, even though I'm using lumber, I can get all the information that I would automatically get with weldments. I'm going to get my lengths. I'm going to get material if I've defined it. I'm going to get a total length. All that information that I need, um, you will see something a little funky here is this material. Like This is actually not normal. This was something they could, did custom, happened to be using one of their files to, to start my work from. Um, convince them that that actually was pulling from here and here, so they don't actually even use these. They shouldn't even be there, but that's all right. Now, for non-items, again, my panels, I'm not going to get a whole lot of information here, right? I'm just going to get the material. I'm going to get the quantity. You could see that I've got four of these pieces. I went ahead and you could see I built it. I actually built two of them and I mirrored it. That's on these faces over here. 
but I can certainly come in here and add things such as a description and say, you know, this is my plywood. One eighth inch thick. And that's going to go ahead and show my cut list. And my cut list is going to be very much like what my bill of material would be at an assembly level. So I'm not going to build the whole thing for you here, just giving you an example of what's going on for this. But as I'm doing this, and again, I can now build the rest of my panels. I could I could do a linear pattern of this since I know this is equal spacing. I can then mirror all of these bodies to the other side. I don't think I've got a nice plane that's in the middle, so I'm not going to do it. But if I had a plane right smack in the middle, one thing to kind of keep in mind with mirror, just to show you when I did this mirror right here, is that you're not mirroring features. I'm not going in and I'm not grab, trying to grab those weldment structures. I'm actually doing bodies to mirror, selecting the bodies I want to mirror, and that's going to create my other two panels. Just so happens my right plane's in the middle, so if I were to go ahead and mirror, again, I would make sure bodies to mirror, and I could start selecting my items here, and you could see I could start building my packaging in that way. So just one way to do it. And again, as I mentioned, this information is talking to itself, meaning that if I switch something, you'd see I did a couple of little um, equations in here of like, I want to make sure that if I picked a, a dimension that I could modify something else and have it update for me. My equations are actually hiding right here. And all I'm doing is driving that front length. But I added an equation saying, hey, the legs in between need to be divided by four. I did the same over here. I actually told this one it needs to be one and a half times by 220, I think one, one and a half or 1.25. So I added equations to help that build. So now I'm just going to go right into the equation here. I'm going to manage it. Sorry, that popped up a window on my other screen right there. There we go. So there's my 220. I'm going to go ahead and change that to be 240. Oop, not 2240. That would be huge. Let's just do 240. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And you can see everything's rebuilt. All my stuff adjusted, all my panels cre were created. Um, you can also see that now I've named that information here, that description that's actually pulling right here for me. But again, here's that advantage of building in context at a part level instead of. So again, not much fancy here, just showing you how I just modified something I'd already built, showed you how I have the configurations of the weldments. So let's go ahead and look at another example. In that next example, it's going to be a fence. Well, nothing fancy, right? So this is using two different sizes. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of the one I did originally here. Hold on, make sure it's not deleting things I don't want to delete. Yeah, I could do the smart thing, just see I grabbed all that stuff. I'm just going to clear out that selection right here. So just like weldments, it tracks groups. So the first group I grabbed was this. Now you'll notice right now it's going through my post. I do expect that because just like weldments, if I'm using a different size, it's not smart enough to trim. But now that I want to add my posts here, I can go ahead and just add a new group. And I could do this a couple different ways. I could just go ahead and pick on one. I could go ahead and pattern if I'd like. Or I could just come on down the line. And what you're going to see so I actually put these in front of my bar right here. Well, that's the idea of it, right? But it's not doing it, so what do I have to do? Just like I would do in weldments, i got to locate my profile here. So I'm going to locate my profile, and I'm going to use this reference point right here to push that in front of it so my bar goes in the back. And again, I can continue down. Of course, I would go down the entire length there, and just like everything else, I could turn around and say, you know what, I'm going to do a linear pattern of this. I'm going to go ahead and pick a post, and I'm going to be honest, I don't remember the distance in between, so I might have to do a little guessing here, and I apologize for that. The direction, I could use any one of these linear edges. But, again, here's what i got to make sure of here. Let's clear out the direction here, and let's pick that again. There is my direction. I don't have a second direction, so I can clear that out. But more importantly, bodies. So now I could say, I want to go ahead and pick on this body. Define how spaced they are. And I want to say, I think I did nine inches. Yep, nine inches here. And then I could just use my up arrow. 
delete that out. So again, just a different way of looking at this. One last step I would have to take is I would want to trim these pieces. Again, you can see there's my cut list. It's putting all like items together. I happen to make this one cedar. But the secondary part I do just like well, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do a little trim. And the bodies I'm gonna trim is this one. And I'm gonna use these bodies to trim it by. Here, here. That's the only ones I did. And now it's gonna go ahead and split up those pieces. Now again, guys, I realistically understand I probably want some notches in there, or maybe I'm nailing it together. Who knows how I'm building it? But just the idea that I'm not, you know, again, not just using it for structural. And then I'm just gonna show one last example. So again, all I'm doing here is if I just take a look, you can see how easily I can change out. I think I was using a six by six. I could swap that out and say, well, you know what, I really want that to be, you know. Four by six. It's gonna go ahead and change that up for me. Let everything update. That quick and easy. Again, with a cut list. Not gonna make a big drawing here, but I'm just gonna bring in a drawing. Just bring in a front view here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just insert. Now, when I'm dealing with the bill of materials here. I'm going to go ahead and insert my table. It is going to be a weld mitt cut list as opposed to a bill of material. I've got a default cut list that's already there. Those, of course, can be modified. And there you can see I can bring it out. I've got my descriptions based on size. I've got my total lengths and I've got my quantities. So, again, those two, you know, packaging and the fence kind of fall along the same lines. but can also use it for interesting things such as cabinetry. I'm going to show you one last example here. And so I was just having some fun building a, a cabinet yesterday. It's been a while since I've been playing like this, so I was having some good time here. But what I did was I actually created molding. And the easiest way to create something like this is I actually went off of an L angle channel that already existed. I always have a custom folder that I use for playing around here. So if I come in and I look at my ANSI inch, so I'm gonna to go to my weldment profiles here, I'm gonna go into my ANSI inch, you'll see I have a custom. And you can see I've created this crown mold. And again, all I did was I actually pulled up an L angle equals equals um, equal length, did a save as, gave it my new name, and modified it. Let's see if I can open that up for you here. Back up a little bit there, anti inch, custom. This is not configured. I just did a little playing to add some unique features. So again, all this was was an L angle, file save as, and then one of the reasons I like doing this is finding something that's similar or working off of something that's already built is because it already understands that it's a library feature. So I don't have to worry about, did I save this off correctly? Is it doing the right thing? Did I pick the sketch in the plane I'm working on? to save it off as a library feature. It just allows me to work with it. So if I go back to my cabinetry here, I'm just gonna go ahead and edit this. Again, all I did was select a sketch line that I already had that I used to build my cabinetry, just showed the sketch. I'm in group one right now. I'm gonna go ahead and just select another group here. And you can see, and not another group, I apologize, I'm gonna continue that group. And you can see how easily I can just Go around the bottom and get that beautiful crown molding. I can swap out how my corner treatments are. Now it might get a little bit ugly, right? Tell it to do a butt. And I got a little excess here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to that miter. And if I want to add one, say to the top as a decoration, I'm just gonna do a new group. I'm gonna pick on the edge. And there I'd have that kind of fascia going on against my wall. Okay, so just a couple of different examples of how I can use weldments in a lumber industry. I will tell you that actually the first time I saw somebody do this was back in SolidWorks 2012, and my jaw was kind of on the floor. I was like, wow, I didn't know you could do that with something other than structural, structural steel. So again, went over the idea of using um, configured, say, lumber for the idea where I'm going to go ahead and do some packaging or possibly fence. Uh, we have an example in class for weldments that actually they build a picnic table. 
and then just a little bit different. You guys are probably saying, well, what's the difference between this and a sweep? Not much, but the profile is already there, which means I can use it. Maybe I've got different sizes of that as well. So maybe I can go back to, like I did with the lumber and create configurations of that profile and just bring in that profile and again, be able to get this beautiful cut list going on right there for drawings and other information. If you have any questions, um, I don't know how you deal with that, Heather, so you can tell me. Uh, go ahead and throw them into the uh, go ahead and throw them into the chat, and we will get to them at the end of the segment. Okay, so um, I unfortunately have to go back to a meeting. <laughs> so I want to thank everybody for their time again, Heather. Thank you for inviting me. I hope that you guys maybe got something out of it that you didn't know you could do. And if there's any questions that you know Heather's not sure of, I'm pretty sure she knows most of it anyways. But if there's something that she hits up that doesn't, you know, Heather, just take the name, and I can email. Perfect. Thank you, Kenny. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of the day. Pass back to you there, Heather. Thank you. All right, guys. And you should be able to see my screen again. And the last topic we're going to cover, and this one's going to be a little bit shorter than the last two, we're just going to go over what Mate Controller is. So um, Mate Controller is just one of those tools that a lot of people just don't know exists, and they're pretty cool to have it around. But what Mate Controller actually does, it allows you to take advantage of the mates that you've already created and create positions for your parts, so like set positions. So you'll notice in this part, there's about seven positions that this part can fall into. And then you can actually create an animation from those if you wanted to. So if you notice here, I did create an animation of this part going through the seven uh, different positions that this arm has. So let's go over to SolidWorks. So I have this robot arm. And what I can see here is that it has lots of different types of mates. And the first thing I want to talk about, okay, what types of mates can I control with mate controller? Well, I can't control concentric mates with mate controller because they really don't move. They rotate, but that would be more like an angle. But the types of mates I can control are angle mates, distance mates, limit angle mates, limit distance mates, slot mates, width mates, and path and pass mates. So those seven mate types I can control with mate controller. I can make my part move depending on what these are. And you'll notice most of these are the type of mates that when you create it, you actually have to go in and put a number in here. And that's what actually gives us the ability to control these. So how can I get started making a mate controller? So I'm going to go into insert and mate controller. And notice I'm in an assembly with mates that are valid. And rather than picking all of those mates and going into here and picking which mates I can do, which I could definitely do. So I could definitely go in and just say this mate and, you know, start seeing what that looks like at the different positions. Another thing that I can do is I can go into insert mate controller and just have it collect all supported mates. And so it's found seven different mates that I can use. So it looks like there's a lot of angle mates and one distance mate here. And you'll notice here I have different positions that I can put this in. And if I don't know which one's what exactly, I can just kind of rotate them around and see what moves. So now I can, I can create new spots. So position one, let's just have it the straight sticking up and down position that was in just to start off with. And let's make a uh, notice you can add different configurations. So you could add positions in at this configuration. You have all these buttons up here to like add a position, update a position, reset, delete, or reorder the positions. Right now we just have position one. Let's go ahead and create a new one where the wrist. Uh, so notice when I hover over them, I can kind of see what causes what. So let's have one where this turns. 
So this just turns that way. So that's going to go 90. I can hit save. I'll name it position 2. So now between position 1, it looks like this, and then at position 2, it looks like this. Now let's see if I can make it rotate down. So I think that's this lower base one. So let's So this could go out at 45, it could go out 90, it could go zero. Let's put it at 15. So this goes all the way down here. Let's add a new position, name it position three. And there we go. So now it goes from position one to position two to position three. Then maybe I want to fold it in on itself, or maybe so. I can see that this folds it either way. So let's make this forty-five, or let's just go ninety. So now this piece is going to push out to 90. And let's actually do another movement at the same time as this. So let's also have the forearm extend out by 15 millimeters. So now, at the same time these two things are going to happen, I get saved to position 4. And so what goes on, it goes from 1 to 2 to 3 four. And let's leave it like that for now. And you could see we could put in several different positions going through here. But what you'll notice is beside each of these, they got a second value. So it's that's the amount of time it would take to move into these positions. And I'm actually going to change all of these to 0.5 just so we get a little bit quicker of the video. So it's going to take 0.5 seconds in between each one to go to these positions. And what we can do is we can create a video from this. So I'm going to want to make a video of it going in between all these positions. I hit my Calculate Animation button. And notice that does there. You know what? I didn't like how small that extension was. Let's make this uh, 100 instead of just 15. But I already have that position four. I don't want to create a whole new position four. You know what? Why don't I just hit this update position? So now position four is at 100. And I'm going to recalculate again. I noticed at the same time it was rotating, that arm was pulling out. And I could save this. I could have it play on repeat. Or I kind of like this one. It like goes in and out. I'm just showing off the full range of my robot arm. So it's nice that you can create a video from it. Something else nice that's really um, cool about Mate Controller. I'm going to go in and insert it again. So I'm going to go Mate Controller, select all the mates, and just um, do a very quick one here, so let's change the arm lower, let's make that 180. Right. Let's make it 45 and let's add a position again. And let's do form extension out to 100 again, not 1000, and add a position again. And it's position three. So I have these three positions. If I hit green check on my mate controller, it's now saved into here. And what I can actually do, rather than having to have configurations that show that are only different because there are differences in the mates, and I know a lot of people who this is how they think they have to have show the different positions if the mates are slightly different. But if you only are making configurations because something about the mate has changed, 
Mate controller is really good for this because without even having to go into it, you can flip these, between these configurations or between these mate controller positions just like you would with configurations without having to create multiple configurations of the part just because the mate angles are a little bit different. And you can always right click, go in, edit, add new positions. Um, you can lock some of the positions or you can drive them off of different parts. You can reorder the positions if you wanted to change them in the animation and you can delete positions. But it's really um, nice to be able to do that without having to go in and force a new configuration. And that's what we had on Nate controllers. Like I said, it was a little bit of a shorter one, but we're running just on time here. Does anybody have any questions? I didn't see any come in before for Cami and I's sessions. Mm -hmm. All right, I don't see any questions. Thank you guys for joining today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I will see you next month. So next month, it, on the third Wednesday of the month, is going to be November 20th. And I'll see you for straight from support then. Until then, have a great rest of your week, guys. Oh, and if you're coming out to the Hershey rollout, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one, guys. Bye.